Joshua vs Hellenius. This wasn't AJ's best performance, but let's analyze this fight and see how AJ was able to stop Hellenius in seven rounds. Let's talk about Hellenius being the aggressor. Immediately when the fight started, Hellenius pushed AJ back, and throughout this fight, Hellenius was actually the one that was being the aggressor. Yes, he's not a better boxer than AJ, and his technique ain't the best, but by throwing a lot of punches, this was actually troubling Joshua because Joshua should have finished Hellenius in the first round while he was so supposed to just like Deontay Wilder did but by Hellenius being the aggressor Joshua found it hard at times and was finding it difficult to land his own combinations as Hellenius was the one throwing his combinations first. Let's talk about AJ utilizing the jab. Throughout this fight Joshua utilized the jab to perfection. I feel like ever since he's been training with Derek James his jab has improved so much. His jab helped control the fight. Hellenius is a taller fighter but Joshua was the one that was controlling the fight with just the jab. This shows that no matter what your size or height is, a jab is a great punch to help you control the fight, control the ring and most importantly set up powerful punches. Instead of going to the boxing gym and training your physical body or even going to the weights gym, why don't you come to me and get your boxing analysed. In this training plan, your boxing will get analysed and critiqued as well as your opponent's boxing technique as well so you're able to see their weaknesses and how you can beat them. This is a great way for you to understand understand your boxing technique and help you reach that world title level. Email me on inquiries at boxingworld.com and I will go through the different price packages and how I can help you become the fighter you've always wanted to become. Let's talk about AJ's defence. Joshua showed tremendous defensive skills in this fight. Joshua weren't known as a defensive boxer when he was under Rob McCracken, but ever since he's boxed under Derek James, his defence has improved. His ability to slip, parry and dodge his opponent's punches has made it very difficult for his opponents to land a clean punch. This also gives Joshua opportunities to land counter punches. It's the basics that Derek James has been teaching Joshua that has really helped him. If you look at Derek James on the pads with Jamal Charlo you can see that his pad work isn't really fancy at all. All Derek James focuses on is technique making sure that his fighter is punching correctly. This has really helped Joshua as you can see that Joshua is more of a technical boxer compared to the boxer that he was in the past. Let's talk about the jab cross combination. Throughout this fight, one combination that Joshua really tried landing was the jab cross. Joshua wasn't throwing this combination in one area, he was mixing this combination up. So he would always throw a jab to the body and a right hand to the head. We can tell that this was a combination that was worked on in training camp and this worked to perfection because in round 7 Joshua did exactly that. So he threw a jab to the body and then a right hand to his opponent's face which knocked him out. This combination is very very basic but like I mentioned earlier Derek James really focuses on the technique behind the punches when he's training his fighters and by focusing solely on the technique this allowed Joshua to time this punch to perfection and knock his opponent out. What do you think the future holds for Anthony Joshua? Do you think we'll get that super fight with Deontay Wilder? Comment down below and let me know.